Delta Venus, erotica by a nice name. The Veiled Woman George once went to a Swedish bar he liked and sat at a table to enjoy a leisurely evening. At the next table, he noticed a very stylish and handsome couple, the man suave and neatly dressed, and the woman all in black with a veil over her glowing face and brilliant colored jewelry. They both smiled at him. They said nothing to one another, as if they were very old acquaintances and had no need to talk. The three of them watched the activity at the bar, couples drinking together, a woman drinking alone, a man in search of adventures, and they all seemed to be thinking the same things. Finally, the neatly dressed man began a conversation with George, who now had a chance to observe the woman at length and found her even more beautiful. But just when he expected her to join the conversation, she said a few words to her companion that George could not catch, smiled, and glided off. George was crestfallen. His pleasure in the evening was gone. Furthermore, he had only a few dollars to spend, and he could not invite the man to drink with him and discovered perhaps a little more about the woman. To his surprise, it was the man who turned to him and said, Would you care to have a drink with me? George accepted. Their conversation went from experiences with hotels in the south of France to George's admission that he was badly in need of money. The man's response implied that he was extremely easy to obtain money. He did not go on to say how. He made George confess a little more. Now George had a weakness in common with many men. When he was in an expensive mood, he loved to recount his exploits. He did this in intriguing language. He hinted that as soon as he set foot in the street, some adventure presented itself, that he would never, he was never at a loss for an interesting evening or for an interesting woman. His companion smiled and listened. When George had finished talking, the man said, that is what I expected of you the moment I saw you. You are the fellow I am looking for. I am confronted with an immensely delicate problem, something absolutely unique. I don't know if you have had many dealings with difficult neurotic women. No, I can see that from your story. Well, I have. Perhaps I attract them. Just now I'm in the midst of an intricate situation. I hardly know how to get it out of it. I need your help. You say you need money? Well, I can suggest a rather pleasant way of making some. Listen carefully. There is a woman who is wealthy and absolutely beautiful. In fact, flawless. She could be devotedly loved by anyone she pleased. She could be married to anyone she pleased. But for one perverse accident of her nature, she only likes the unknown. But everybody likes the unknown said George, thinking immediately of voyages, unexpected encounters, novel situations. No, not in the way she does. She is interested only in a man she has never seen before and never will see again. And for this man, she will do anything. George was burning to ask if the woman was the one he had been sitting with at the table with them, but he did not dare. The man seemed to be rather unhappy to have to tell and yet was impelled to tell this story. He continued, I have this woman's happiness to watch over. I would do anything for her. I have devoted my life to satisfying her caprices. I understand, said George. I could feel the same way about her. Now, said the elegant stranger, if you would like to come with me, you could perhaps solve your financial difficulties for a week. And incidentally, Perhaps your desire for adventure. George flushed with pleasure. They left the bar together. The man hailed a taxi. In the taxi, he gave George fifty dollars. Then he said he was obliged to blindfold him, that George must not see the house he was going to, nor the street, as he was never to repeat this experience. George was in a turmoil of curiosity now, with visions of the woman he had seen at the bar haunting him seeing each moment her glowing mouth and burning eyes behind the veil. 
What he had particularly liked was her hair. He liked thick hair that weighed a face down, a gracious burden, odorous and rich. It was one of his passions. The ride was not very long. He submitted amiably to all the mystery. The blindfold was taken off his eyes before he came out of the taxi, so as not to attract the attention of the taxi driver or doorman. But the stranger had con counted wisely on the glare of the entrance lights to blind George completely. He could see nothing but brilliant lights and mirrors. He was ushered into one of the most sumptuous interiors he had ever seen, all white and mirrored, with exotic plants, exquisite furniture, covered in damask and such a soft rug that their footsteps were not heard. He was led through one room after another, each in different shades, all mirrored, so that he lost all sense of perspective. Finally, they came to the last. He gasped slightly. He was in a bedroom with a canopied bed set on a dais. There were furs on the floor and vaporous white curtains at the windows and mirrors, more mirrors. He was glad that he could bear these repetitions of himself, infinite reproductions of a handsome man to whom the mystery of the situation had given a glow of expectation and alertness he had never known. What could this mean? He did not have time to ask himself. The woman who had been at the bar entered the room, and just as she entered, the man who had brought him to the place vanished. She had changed her dress. She wore a striking satin gown that left her shoulders bare and was held in place by a ruffle. George had the feeling that the dress would fall from her at one gesture, strip from her like a glistening sheath, and that underneath would appear her glistening skin, which shone like satin and was equally smooth to the fingers. He had to hold himself in check. He could not yet believe that this beautiful woman was offering herself to him, a complete stranger. He felt shy, too. What did she expect of him? What was her quest? Did she have an unfilled desire? He had only one night to give all his lover's gifts. He was never to see her again. Could it be he might find the secret to her nature and possess her more than once? He wondered how many men had come to this room. She was extraordinarily lovely, with something of both satin and velvet in her hair. Her eyes were dark and moist, her mouth glowed, her skin reflected the light, her body was perfectly balanced. She had the incisive lines of slender woman together with a provocative ripeness. Her waist was very slim, which gave her breasts an even greater prominence. Her back was like a dancer's, and every undulation set off the richness of her hips. She smiled at him. Her mouth was soft and full and half open. George approached her and laid his mouth on her bare shoulders. Nothing could be softer than her skin. What a temptation to push the fragile dress from her shoulders and expose the breasts which distended in the satin. What a temptation to undress her immediately. But George felt that this woman could not be treated so summarily, and that she required subtlety and adroitness. Never had he given to his every gesture so much thought and artistry. He seemed determined to make a long siege of it, and as she gave no sign of hurry, he lingered over her bare shoulders, inhaling the faint and marvelous odor that came from her body. He could have taken her then and there, so potent was the charm she cast. But first he wanted to make her a sign. He wanted her to be stirred, not soft and pliant like wax under his fingers. She seemed amazingly cool, obedient, but without feeling, never a ripple on her skin. And though her mouth was parted for kissing, it was not responsive. They stood there near the bed without speaking. 
He passed his hands along the satin curves of her body, as if to become familiar with it. She was unmoved. He slipped slowly to his knees as he kissed and caressed her body. His fingers felt that under the dress she was naked. He led her to the edge of the bed, and she sat down. He took off her slippers. He held her feet in his hands. She smiled at him, gently and invitingly. He kissed her feet, and his hands ran under the folds of the long dress, feeling the smooth legs up to the thighs. She abandoned her feet to his hands, held them pressed against his chest now, while his hands ran up and down her legs under the dress. If her skin was so soft along the legs, what would it be near her sex? There was there where it was always the softest. Her thighs were pressed together so he could not continue to explore. He stood and leaned over to kiss her into a reclining position. As she lay back, her legs opened slightly. He moved his hands all over her body as if to kindle each little part of it with his touch, stroking her again from the shoulders to feet before he tried to slide his hands between her leg, more open now, so that he could almost reach her sex. With his kisses, her hair had become disheveled and the dress had fallen off her shoulders and partly uncovered her breasts. He pushed it off altogether with his mouth revealing the breasts he had expected, tempting, taut, and of the finest skin, with rosette tips like those of a young girl. Her yielding almost made him want to hurt her, so as to rouse her in some way. The caresses roused him, but not her. Her sex was cool and soft to his fingers, obedient, but without vibrations. George began to think that the mystery of this woman lay not in her being able to be aroused, but it was not possible. Her body promised such sensuality, the skin was so sensitive, the mouth so full, it was impossible that she should not feel. Now he caressed her continuously, dreamfully, as if he were in no hurry, waiting for the flame to kindle in her. There were mirrors all around them, repeating the image of the woman lying there, her dress fallen off her breasts, her beautiful naked feet hanging over the bed, her legs slightly parted under the dress. He must tear the dress off completely, lie in the bed with her, feel her whole body pressed against his. He began to pull the dress down, and she helped him. Her body emerged like that of Venus coming out of the sea, he lifted her so that she would lie fully on the bed, and his mouth never ceased kissing every part of her body. Then, a strange thing happened. When he leaned over to feast his eyes on the beauty of her sex, its rosiness, she quivered, and George almost cried out for joy. She murmured, Take your clothes off. He undressed. Naked, he knew his power. He was more at ease naked than clothed because he had been an athlete, a swimmer, a walker, a mountain climber, and he knew that he could please her. She looked at him. Was she pleased? When he bent over her, was she more responsive? He could not tell. But now his desire, he desired her so much that he could not wait to touch her with the tip of his sex, but she stopped him. She wanted to kiss it, fondle it. She set about this with so much eagerness that he found himself with her full backside near his face and able to kiss and fondle her to his content. By now he was taken with the desire to explore and touch every nook of her body. He parted the opening of her sex with his two fingers. He feasted his eyes on the glowing skin, the delicate flow of honey, the hair curling around his fingertips. His mouth grew more and more avid, as if he had just become a sex organ itself, capable of so enjoying her that it continued to fondle her flesh with his tongue. He would reach some absolute unknown pleasure. As he bit into her flesh with such delicious sensation, he felt again in her quiver of pleasure. 
Now he forced her away from his sex, for fear she might experience all her pleasure in merely kissing him, and that he would be cheated of feeling himself inside her womb. It was as if they both had become ravenously hungry for the taste of flesh, and now their two mouths melted into each other, seeking the leaping tongues. Her blood was fire now. By his slowness he seemed to have done this at last. Her eyes shone brilliantly, her mouth could not leave his body, and finally he took her as she offered herself, opening her vulva with her lovely fingers, as if she could no longer wait. Even then they suspended their pleasure, and she felt him quietly enclosed. Then she pointed to the mirror and said, laughing, Look, it appears as if we're not making love as if I were merely sitting on your knees, and you, rascal, you have it inside me the whole time, and you're even quivering. Ah, I can't bear it any longer, this pretending I have nothing inside. It's burning me up. Move, now, move. She threw herself over him so that he could gyrate his, around his erect penis, deriving from his erotic dance a pleasure which made her cry out. And, at the same time, a lighting flash of ecstasy tore through George's body. Despite the intensity of their lovemaking, when he left, she did not ask him his name. She did not ask him to return. She gave him a light kiss on his almost painful lip and sent him away. For months, the memory of that night haunted him, and he could not repeat the experience with any woman. One day, he encountered a friend who had just been paid lavishly from some articles and invited him to have a drink. He told George the spectacular story of a scene he had witnessed. He was spending money freely in a bar when a very distinguished man approached him and suggested a pleasant pastime, observing a magnificent love scene. And as George's friend happened to be a confirmed voyeur, the suggestion met with instant acceptance. He had been taken to a mysterious house, into a sumptuous apartment, and concealed in a dark room, where he had set, seen a nymphomaniac making love with an especially gifted and potent man. George's heart stood still. Describe her, he said. His friend described the woman George had made love to, even the satin dress. He also described the canopied bed, the mirrors, everything. George's friend had paid $100 for the spectacle, but it had been worthwhile and had lasted for hours. Poor George. For months he was wary of women. He could not believe such perfidy and such play-acting. He became obsessed with the idea that the women who invited him to their apartments were all hiding some spectator behind the curtain. <laughs>